very well, thanks for coming. Uh, actually, the, I'm going to talk about uh, the, the Women in the Dune as a novel and the film. You can check in YouTube, Women in, uh, in the Dune. Japanese novelist Kobo Abe, 1924 uh, 1993, whose works have been translated into numerous languages, is known for the similarity of his fiction with the literature by Kafka. In many respects, most of the rules and literary analysis of the Kafka can be applied to the interpretation of Abe, losing face, minor literature, stuttering in the mother tongue, and cartography, etc. Moreover, Gatari referred to Abe in his essay, Tokyo the Proud, which was compiled in the book Tokyo Theater, 1986, after his visit in Tokyo. Gatari addressed Abe's famous novel, the ruined map, according to journalist Corinne Boulet, who was correspondent with the French daily Liberation and also the friend of Guitari, as well as one of the numerous who have mentioned the pedigree march. I mean, I, we had the trouble in the, in the, inside the Tokyo because Guitari asked us and Guitari visited our the pirate radio station. Guitari had a conversation with the Kobo Abe, this novelist, about the literature of the Kafka and the Elias Canetti, etc., during the 80s, Paris and Tokyo. Therefore, there is evidence that they met, although their details are not yet known. The Women in the Dune, one of the representative novels by Abe, was published in 1962, and then two years later, made into the cinema by Hiroshi Teshigawara and Abe himself. The actor of the protagonist was Eiji Okada, also known as the protagonist in the film Hiroshima Munamu by Anna Lenin. The plot is, in a very rural seaside village, the protagonist, a teacher and amateur entomologist, is captivated by people in this community in the house at the bottom of the vast sand pit with a young woman. Then they are obliged to work of shoveling off ever-growing sand desert and dune which threaten the village. It's almost like Sisyphus gesture. There is no explanation of the reason why the community called them, despite of the many interpretations on the sound pit by literature critic and the literature studies, metaphor of the political party, metaphor of a pre-modern feudal society, atomized, uh, modern atomized family, etc. Abe committed, oh no, the, the protagonist committed many times the fright and escaping from the sand pit, but always failed somehow and began to hold a strange sexual relationship with this woman. In the end of the story, he succeeded to invent a special machine as a kind of the pump that could produce waters by capillary operation of the sand itself through the evaporation on the surface of the dune. Nevertheless, he decided to remain in the sand pit after the woman was evacuated in her ill, suggesting extra woolly pregnancy. The image of the sound in the dune are so beautiful in this avant-garde modern style in the cinema, especially in the visual comparison of the surface of the sound dune with that of the human skin. Oh, you can even, uh, in the English edition, you can read uh, the translation of this novel. Okay, the, I quote uh, two passages uh, to, to, from uh, women, uh, uh, the women in the Dune. Quote, The fundamental nature of the sound is very difficult to grasp when you think of it in its stationary state. Sound not only flows, but this very flow in the sound is in italic. You yourself become sound. You see with the eyes of the sound. Page 99. Unquote. Quote, again, there was a spasmodic contradiction and again the same thing, repetition, the same generous repetition to which he had devoted himself, dreaming of other things, eating, walking, sleeping, high coughing, bowling, copulating. Unquote. Uh, 141. Uh, it's a description of the, their strange, uncanny coupling or uncanny relationships that women and the guy are the protagonist in the sound pit. By the way, is it possible to contend that 
all animals, plants, minerals, microbes, and even uh, astronomical entities are defined as a sort of the machinic being. If one just of this perspective, then both perspective on the universe and the attitude on the globe would change radically. It leads us directly to the notion that all organisms and the universes are, as such, operating within a movement of infinite machinic series. Then what does the term machinic imply here? It doesn't indicate anything mechanical at all. In shorthand, it means mutual immanent coupling of heterogeneous moments. The amazing, famous, the amazing relationship discussed by Drew's Guattari between Orchid and Wasp is frequently addressed as the example of the machinic assemblages because it makes visible the uncanny symbiosis and the milieu of the becoming in a double capture in which the wasp becomes the bioapparatus for the production of the orchid, while the orchid becomes the sexual organ of the wasp. It's a famous example. Uh, the machinic here, here is constituted as a mutual process of deterioration. That is what Drew's Gattari also compared with the body without organ. In the machining, heterogeneous moments between the two or more units are brought together in a functional totality by coupling and interlocking each other. In this process, the machining generates an intended effect and present as immanent consistency. When the components of the machining interact with each other, the operation generates something new, what is called the machining emerges in particular movement of the effects among the livings and non-livings, human and non-humans. A machinic assemblage is as such, in this combination and the interconnection of the machines. In the late Gattari, especially in the cosmoses and the three ecologies, the machinic is rather than the mere operation, more concerned with becoming, with generating new variation as a catapult to jump toward another dimension from or within given reality. In machinic assemblages, to be an object is to impose, unify, and crisscross infinitely with each other object. Put differently, to be or become an object is to invent an alliance or assemblage, and also to negotiate with other objects, not in direct relationship, but though fragile affiliation and temporary becoming. Objects affect each other by being modulated the machinic assemblage as transmonadic unit. A Gattari frequently used this term transmonadic unit in cosmosis. It's also possible to see the example of the notion of participation to explain the what is the production of subjectivity in, in, in the late Gattari. Uh, participation as a fusion or contagion of ideas in the modern context of the psychoanalysis and the literature theory. In the psychoanalysis, the partial object means fragmentary piece of the desired object, which is adjacent to the part of the body and a function as another point of the dividendal drives. Gattari proposed to locate partial objects toward partial enunciations, since the notion of a partial object expand itself to reach many layers of the production of subjectivity through machinic, architectural, ecological, religious formation, etc. In Mikhail Bafti's literature theory, consumer or readers, audience can become co-creator by their attempts at separating the content of artwork from conventional signification and interpretation. Artists are thus pathic and no longer merely passive in transferential field of subjectivity, operating between artists and the spectators, I mean audience. Now it is obvious that the production of subjectivity transverses and includes both object and subject. A lucrative process of auto-production emerges where neither creator nor producer as such exist. Rather, the production of subjectivity takes place in the side of objects as the very process of the becoming subject in the machinic assemblages among things and objects composed by infinite combination of biological, chemical, viruses, molecular moments. 
if those partial objects in psychoanalysis can only be conceived as the effect of a failure of integration of an object of desire, machinic animism, on the contrary, can make visible the environment and the wildness as a creative effect of the transference and the permutation of the partial subjects. Already in the dialogue with Claire Parnet in the 70s, Deleuze had adopted this conception, participation. Surprisingly, Deleuze even used the term strange ecology in the end of the chapter of the, the, the English literature. As well, uh, strange ecology as well in his discussion of unnatural, unnatural participation or participation against nature. Here is raised a singular symbiosis which consists not in the feeling of the pity but in unnatural participation. Drew's Gutterby have a similar claim uh, in Tadam Plateau and chapter 10. I quote Unnatural participation or unnatural nuptial, marriage nuptials, are the true nature spanning the kingdom of nature. Unquote. Again, the same chapter, quote, they are in the kingdom of natural participation. That is the only way nature operates against itself. Unquote. By the term unnatural participation, Bruce Gattari meant a set of the notion of mutual inclusion, mutual deterioration, and disjunctive synthesis of something beyond nature and such, while still points becoming nature through an uncanny symbiosis among the humans, non-humans, living and non-living agencies. In Drew's Gutierrez's argument, the notion of unnatural participation or unnatural nuptial never represents nor depends on nature as commonly understood, understood in the romantic sense. Ecosophy or virtual ecology rejects any cult of the idealization of the nature to instead posit a strange, uncanny conviviality which seemed to be one of the helpful resources for initiatives of bioregionalism, biodiversity, and their social cultural counterparts, for instance, multiplicity in the cultures, multitude in the politics, plurality of the mind state, state of mind, dispersion and the diversity of minor language in the literature, etc. The notion of unnatural participation or unnatural nuptial appear to be close to Levi Brill's anthropological concept of the participation, a modified version we can find in several plays of the Southern Plateau. Drew's Gutterri invented the term unnatural participation in order to elucidate their concept of becoming, defined as changing transversal combination of heterogeneous moments of the world which includes, subsume, comprehends all things, objects, and living or non-living entities. Unnatural participation, thus, does not indicate melange with nature. Nature here is simply envisioned as machinic and chaotic assemblages of all layers of permutation of multiple agencies. If writers are magicians or sorcerers, then writing somehow points to mode of becoming in certain type of literature and potentially all performative expressive cultures. When some authors write about something, they are becoming themselves the very object they are addressing. At this point, the Rusgatari have in their mind Virginia Woolf, H.P. Lovecraft, and Kafka, etc. We could also add Abe Kobo with whom Gutterri and he had enjoyed casual conversation, as I said. The same can be said uh, for the, his novel. Drew's Gutterri considers the process of the becoming in variety of expressive culture and artistic invention, for instance, plastic, musical, visual, performative expressions, etc. From this perspective, writing, or potentially performing and expressing, consists in the dual process of re-territorialization and de-territorialization, of becoming other than writer or enunciator, 
since becoming is to make alliance a fault an occasion of unforeseen encounter. The production of subjectivity precedes the correlation between subject and object by its disjunctive synthesis and mutual deterioration. Let me present one additional example in the version of beautiful text, Mrs. Darway, Walking Promenade, Constitute and Happy and Singularity, made visible in the whisper of her flow of mind. I am this, I am that. So, for her, everything is I, in the unnatural participation, or becoming writer. In proto-subjective environment, or inter-objective atmosphere, which embraces all objects and produces subjectivity without an identified sub subject. This perspective enables us to abandon the conventional and the division between nature and culture. Guterri called this process of collective individualization as ambience the production of the subjectivity. So, the, for Guterri, subjectivities can always take place and emerge as a kind of feel and ambience. I skipped a little bit. Also in the dialogue, uh, Drew said, uh, the page 30, I quote, The movement of betrayal has been defined as double turning away. Man turned his face away from the God, who also turned his face away from man. It is in this double turning away, in the divergence of the faces, that the line of the fright, that is the territorialization of man, is traced. Betrayal is like fifth. It is always double, unquote. I think this passage also the, the, the very helpful for understanding and reading and interpreting uh, the novel by Kobo Abe. As for this type of gesture of betrayal, the same holds true for Abe no novel, The Woman in the Doom, in terms of the uncanny coupling, which present a diagrammatic machine to reject the conventional form of loving and conviviality. If we see radical dynamic rapport and interrelation within the mutual betrayal of personality and faces, then in encountering an exposure of the face, we must focus on the micropolitics as a relationship of betrayal that is prior to society and ethics. The assumption that the face is political does not intend to prefer the politics or ideology to literature or art, but instead to situate betrayal as the primal form of the micropolitics at the roots of the literature and the cultural expression. So, the, I think the cross, okay, the cursory reading with the Batarian view, I think, on the women in the dune and the face afford us certain creative interpretation and the Druze and the Batarian philosophy and especially Gatari's philosophy. The aim of the philosophy and the philosophy within the notion of machinic assemblages drawn from the Tari rate works is not restricted to efforts of refraining a pollution or preserving endangered species, which is very significant. But uh, another aim of the philosophy is inventing outer, native, or uncanny, sometimes, convivialty of the singularity translated form from uncanny symbiosis of the flat or transversal universe, which is distinct from mere horizontal relationship based on the equality of the power and the resources. Thank you very much.
急にしようって言ってないな。<笑><笑>